I'm Claire from Creative The Otter Way. I'm an independent demonstrator for Stamping Up in the UK. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate you giving me some of your crafty time to pop along and watch my um, video this week. I have got a wow card for you. You know how much I love a real wow on the inside. Well, let me show you the outside. Ta-da! Really beautiful papers. I will talk you through what set they are from. But this is the inside. Are you ready? Wow! Look at that. Can you see the beautiful golds on that paper? Um, it stands up like that, you can see. I don't really know what to call it, um, so I'm calling it a pop-up book card. Um, I just love it, I'm really pleased. I did a similar card at Christmas that had a few more sort of panels on it and was really elaborate. Um, and I was asked if I could make one slightly simpler, and this is it, but equally, as stunning don't you agree look at that so i'm going to talk you through how to make this we will make this together and i promise that whatever papers you're using you will be wowed with what you've achieved so this is the card um i'm a stamping up demonstrator in the uk like i said and because of that i tend to mainly use stamping up products so there's a new mini catalogue out not so new really came out in january we're now halfway through February. How did that happen? Um, I have absolutely no idea. I do a stamp kit um, club and the latest stamp kit club has a, a few different um, products from this set. So what I like to do is show uh, my crafters how to use the bits in their kit um so i thought okay let's have a play with these papers and see what i come up with and this is the result so the paper is absolutely beautiful you can't even see it in here it's called um what is it called <laughs> forever love forever love of course it is it says it there you silly woman forever love speciality designer paper and it is very beautiful i can't even show you it because i've used it all um no seriously i have lovely set of dies that come with it i'll try and quickly show you it because you don't want too much waffle um they are absolutely stunning we're going to do a little bit of fun with those some beautiful ribbons um and all sorts of bits now for some of you that haven't got all this lovely shiny gold beautiful paper um, and you've yet to order it, I'm going to show you a step to down version. So for the card that I made here, mainly the gold does all the talking, but I'm going to show you how to do all of this detail and all of this on the front together. I've actually just remembered. I haven't brought that ribbon through, so I will talk you, we'll get, we'll get away with it somehow. But I'm going to show you how to make it. But I'm going to use some different colours. So, as part of um, Stampin' Up's latest offers, there's also a celebration brochure, which is like this. If you haven't heard of Stampin' Up, then you need to Google it. Um, if you're in the UK, you can shop the products with me. Um, or any other demonstrator that's local to you. It's really nice to have somebody local um, because then you get to meet them in person and, and do all sorts of workshops and classes with them. But if you're anywhere in the, else in the world, look up Stamping Up and see who your local demonstrator is. So this basically is a little brochure of all stuff you can earn free. Um, in the UK, you just need to spend £45 and then you get to choose something. And there's this lovely paper here. Um, very unassuming paper and we're going to do something a bit well with that so the papers were free so it feels like the card's free to make um which is even nicer the colors that are in it are wild wizard wild wheat oh wasabi that's an old color where did that come from wild wheat and pool party but for this stamping i'm going to go up a darker shade i'm going to use lost lagoon because i think pool party might get a little bit lost so those colours, that's Pool Party, um, and this is Wild Wheat. Um, wasn't a lover of Wild Wheat at first, but the more I use it, the more I like it. So we're going to be using those, and I'm just going to run you through how to make the card. Um, if you like what you see and you want to shop some of the supplies, 
then just get in touch. You can find me on Instagram, you can find me on Facebook, a little bit in pin on Pinterest as well, um, dipping my toe now and again. But otherwise, just send me an email, creativeyottaway at gmail.com and I love to chat craft. So that's that. The sizes that you need to make this card, um, if I put them there so you can see them all, then you can screenshot it. Um, I've put them in inches, I've put them in centimetres and whichever suits you go with. So the base card, if I bring the sample back in, the base card is this outside bit, which is like a big M, okay, like that. I did think about putting wrapping up another piece of card around it. Um, if I was doing a really special card, like for a 60th anniversary, or I probably would do an extra wrap around it, so it's extra, uh, extra layered and extra beautiful. But I think this is all right. This is a wedding day card, and um, it's really strong. So the base card is just that size, um, and then you need to do some scoring. The designer series paper, you need three pieces, one for the front, two for the insides, here and here. I don't know if you can see that. Then you need two pieces that are the backgrounds on here. Okay, and then two pieces that are just covering up these panels. And on this card, I've done gold. Ooh, let me move that over, just so you can see. It really highlights the fact that it pops off the page. And um, we're going to do that in a different colour here. What was that on there? Sorry, my eye is distracted. Right, what else do we need? Coloured card. So these pieces here, these pages are coloured card. And then on the spine, that's coloured card as well. And I think that's it. So not too much paper. I'm sure you could find some in your stash. Um, a little bit of ribbon from the front and some extra card for your die cutting. But oh, hang on, I'll stop talking for a minute. Screenshot that. Okay, and then we can get crafting, my favourite bit. So we need, um, I'm going to do it in white base card, I think. Got a nice bit of uh, thick white card. Not because it's got too much weight on it, but I like a nice strong base card. Um, I don't like cards that are flimsy and fall over. So this needs to be five and seven eighths, which I think I'd already prepped. Yeah, five and seven eighths by 11 and three quarters. Now, let me just check that. Yes, we are good to go. So five and seven eighths by 11 and three quarters. And we're going to score it several times. I've lost my sizes. I don't want to tell you the wrong size. OK, we're going to score it on the long side. At four and one eighth, I'm going to talk to you in inches, but remember if you took a sheet screenshot of the sizes, you can do it in centimetres. I'm just going to turn that round. Um, four and one eighth. Okay, so four and one eighth is there, and I am scoring, not cutting. Okay, and I want a really strong score line, so I've gone over it a few times. Five and seven eighths. Five and seven eighths and seven and five eighths. So again, just gone over my score lines a few times um, just so I can really see where they are. And that is the base card. So what happens with that is I fold it back like that and you end up with that. Okay, so that's going to be my card base. And basically, I'm just going to decorate it. It's as simple as that, honestly. And you'll be so glad you did when we do the ta-da bit. Um, it's such a wow on the inside. So that bit, we're going to put to one side and we're going to do the prep for the other stuff. So the coloured card for the panels inside. Now I'm going to use this colour, um, the wild wheat, because... The paper in the celebration set is sort of, well, it's not sort of, it is these colours. So I've picked the colours that all go together. Oh, there's that one. There's that one and the other one. So it's all 
patterns around that wild wheat. So hopefully you can see that and it's just going to make the card a bit more of a wow. Okay, so I am going to pick, let's have a look. I think we can have this for the front. Okay, so remember these sizes I will go through in a minute. I'm going to layer it onto some of this wild wheat. Okay, just because I want it to really pop off the page. So the size that you need for the designer series paper for the front and the back, or the front and the insides, is three and seven eighths by five and three quarters. So I've got one in that colour. And then the inside ones, I've got this colour, but I actually might do it that way round. Remember, stamping up paper is two-sided. Um, and this is quite nice because it's got those two tones of colours in it. So I'm not sure yet. We're going to go with that. Now, because I want to put a piece of designer series paper on the top of this panel, I've added another layer. So I'm going down one eighth of an inch. So this was going to be or is uh, three and seven eighths. So this would be three and three quarters and it would be five and three quarters. So it would be five and five eighths and that will just give me that really lovely layer like that do you know i didn't even show you the stamp set did i we come to it i'm so excited i just want to get on and make oh no glue did i have any glue oh look let's see if there's any glue left and ribbon we needed ribbon as well didn't we right let's bring this back in because we are going to stick this to the front and the sides. So these are either going to be like that or like this. And I'm not sure. I'm going to have the spine pieces as well. Let's cut the spines and then that will give us a bit of an idea. So these bits here I'm calling the spine, okay? And I'm definitely going to do them in this colour. Um, they need to be oh, one and five eighths by uh, five and three quarters. So let's do that. Let's move that out of the way again. So one and five eighths. One and five eighths. Sorry, I just talked to myself. Well, actually, I talked to you as though you were in the room with me. I just find it a lot easier. Um, by five and three quarters. Five and three quarters. So one and five eighths by five and three quarters. And I don't have to mess about with any of this because it's just coloured card. It's coloured all the way through. I don't have to go along it with my pen. So let's stick those on first. So I can just flatten that down and stick them on. Let's do that. Just because I'm unsure what pattern paper to do. Whether I want a muted pattern or a, a bit more of a, a brighter pattern. So there's one. That just goes straight down there. And then we just glue the other. If you keep your card on your table, just flat, you end up using less glue. What I mean by that is if you hold your card up in the air, which quite often I do, the glue goes all over the show and you end up using more. Whereas if you do it flat on your table, you use less glue. Okay, so that is there. Just going around the edge, just making sure it's all nice and flat. And that gives me that bit. That already makes it stand out, doesn't it? Right, so do I want it that way round or this colour? Do you know what? This is so hard. And then I'm going to have some more of this colour on the top. I think that solved it because that's that's too much of the same colour, isn't it? So I'm going to use the, the patterned side. Pattern side wins. 
the pattern side is up. Okay, that wasn't too difficult after all that. Oh, quite often I have a row with myself. Stamping Up do such beautiful paper and quite often both sides are really lovely. So just to um, go over what size these pieces are, they are three and seven eighths by five and three quarters. Now, you could get away with them so a fraction bigger, um, but this is the size that I decided on. It sort of gives a nice frame all around your cart. So you've got a nice white border and then you've got your pattern. The other thing that I've done is because it's designer series paper, it's got a white core. So I've used my um, Wild Wheat Stamping Right marker and I've just gone along the edge, all the way along and just got rid of that white line. Um, I did that before I came on camera just so you wouldn't have to wait and watch paint dry while I did it. So um, I do that with all my designer series paper. If you've watched my videos before, I bang on about it a lot. So, so sorry if you, if you already know that and I'm teaching the converted. So this is the other side. Oh, it's getting quite exciting. I love it when a card comes together and we're almost at the ta moment. Um, have I got that the right way up? Yes. Uh, this paper is really confusing because the flowers are going one way, the leaves are going all over and it's like, is that the right way up? Is that the wrong way up? So that's going to go on there like that. I am loving that. Now, what do we do next? Should we do the front? The only trouble is I haven't got my ribbon. Let me see if I've got some. got some gold oh do you know what that's actually really nice yep let's do that okay that's the inside of the card done for a moment let's concentrate on the front so this panel is going to go on the front of our card it's three and seven eighths by five and three quarters and then this is going on top of that and it's an eighth of an inch smaller so it's three and three quarters by five and five eighths now I need to put some ribbon on so for that, what I'm going to do is use some double-sided tape and I'm just going to put it along there, both sides. I'm just going to use double-sided on this rather than my Tombow glue. Um, you can use whatever you like. Put some in the middle because I want it to really stick. I'm doing this for speed. Usually I'd do my scissors and be all neat and tidy. I'm just tearing it for now because I can't see my scissors and I don't want you to have to wait again. That is going on there. Put there. Just like that. Then I need something fat to tie my ribbon round. So I usually use a spritzer. Again, I haven't got that, so I'm going to use my thumb. So I'm just going to tie it round my thumb. Like so, and then tie it again so you've just got a knot. Like so, this is like a cheats bow, so you end up with that loop, okay, like that. And then I'm going to tear it off on the sides. Uh, God, I'm really disorganised, I haven't got my bin either. It was the excitement of showing you how to make this card. So I have taken off the um, backing of the sticky tape on both sides. I'm going to put it about there and carefully wrap it around, making sure that my bow is straight. Or my, my bubble. It's like a little bubble at the minute. Wrap it round to there. Sticky side there. Just got big scissors. What's happened to my stamping up scissors? What is going on? Okay, so that's there. That's sticky, sticky. That's sticky. Now take the rest of the double sided tape off. Okay, like that. And like this. Oh. You just knew it wasn't going to play ball, didn't you? Oh, 
rub it down, pull it up. So if it won't come up, just press a corner down with the finger now or the bone folder and then it should peel up a lot easier. That one doesn't want to got the wrong end. Okay, like that. <laughs> okay, right. Sticky all over. I need to place it really carefully. So I am doing it on one side, checking top and bottom, cross to the other. Oh, ta-da! <laughs> that feels like a ta-da moment as it is. Okay. So you can't see the ribbon on the back, it's not interfering with that. It's tucked around really nicely. Put some glue on here. Okay, put the card down. You lose let use less glue if your card is down because it doesn't come pouring out so much. Okay, Tombow glue gives you wiggle room. Find the front of your card. Put that on there. Oh, there you go. Looks lovely already. That gold is really nice on there. Okay, so that's the front of our card. Uh, that is the back of our card, so we're going to do that in a minute. And this is the inside. Now, I've just been thinking maybe I should use this colour or Lost Lagoon as the inside because the Lost Lagoon is really nice. Because mm -hmm. that will really stand out, won't it? Could you bear with me a minute if I run to go and get it? Oh my god i don't know if i've got the right size okay we're gonna go with it i've got lost lagoon i think that's gonna be nicer so the two bits on the inside these pieces okay i'm gonna cut next so what size do they need to be five and a half by four and a half oh have we got four and a half no we haven't oh. Four inches. Gonna have to go again, girls. Okay. Um, um, what could you do while I'm gone? You could cut your other paper. So you could die cut your bits for the front. I will be quick. Okay, I'm back. Back for good this time. <gasps> See, if I was a professional, I would cut that out of my video. <laughs> okay, five and a half by four and a quarter. Um, so four and a quarter. I'm going to do two at once. Four and a quarter by five and a half. And then five and a half again. Now, we need to score it. So on the longer side, the bit that's five and a half, you're going to score it at one inch. Okay, one. Okay. And then four inches. Remember that if 
they are on centimeters if you need them in fence centimeters just on the screenshot the first bit five inches and then that leaves you with that half inch bit at the bottom so five and a half by four and a quarter and then on the five and a half inch side you need to do some score lines one inch four inches and five inches just like that okay now these get bent round like so okay. just make sure you've got nice strong folds and this one here like that do that on both at the same time and then we decorate it now the bit that's got the extra half an inch is going to be on the outside so do it that way around you need to put some designer series paper on the two panels that needs to be two and seven eighths by four and one eighth so they are going to be like that and then hmm, what bit was i going to do down the side Should I do this Let's do that. Okay. Does that look right? Yeah. We should be doing the. Uh, no, I think that's right. We're going to do it like that. Okay. And the two little panels at the side, they need to be seven eighths by four and one eighth. So seven eighths. Oh. One, there's two, oh, it's jumping around, seven eighths, and we just need to check they're four and one eighth, because they're slightly bigger. Should we do those two together? Okay. There you go. Hopefully, that's all I've cut in then. Okay, so that's going to go on there. That's going to go on there. So we can go ahead and stick those on. Oh, look, now my glue's running out. <laughs> Do you know what? I think there's a lesson to me there. It doesn't matter how excited you are, Claire, about sharing a craft project make sure you've got all your stuff and you're really sure of the colours you're going to use. I blame Stamping Up um, just because they do such lovely colours and the paper is two-sided so you know you never know what you're going to fall in love with on the day or you could change your mind from the morning to the afternoon. Isn't that true? Okay that's going to go there because that's going to be our panel down the side. So that is one done. Okay, so you've got two pieces that have no designer series paper on. Then this side is done exactly the same. Oh. You need to keep going with glue fairy glue. You can't be doing different glue now. So that's going to be, I think it has got a right way up. So that's going to be like that, just like that. And this is on the side. There you go. So that panel, I actually think maybe it'd be nice in, with a, a metallic down the side, a bit like the first one with the gold. But hey ho, we're going to use what we've got. So these are going to go here and here. So let's concentrate on one. So this panel here is the one that's one inch. So we're going to put some glue on there. And this is the front, okay? I'm going to line it up where I think it is in the middle, okay? And then bring the spine up 
and over and then press down on there like so okay so that is our first panel so we're just going to press down there as well then this piece here okay we're gonna bend it over like so put some glue on just this panel just like that and then this card is coming over okay the front of the card is just coming over to that panel sorry I realized I've done that a bit quick I will do it in slow motion on the other one yep it's not gonna stick just yet so we're just gonna put that on there so if I bring that over just make sure that that's stuck can you see how it's working how cool is that okay so we're going to do the same on this side so this panel the one that's a one inch panel is going to go here so I'm going to put some glue on the panel be careful not to get it anywhere else just on your panel okay and this time what you want to do is line it up with the other side as much as possible okay so that looks about right to me so I'm going to bring that over okay bring it back over that way and just reaffirm that panel is glued before you do anything else just press it with your bone folder or rub over it with your hands but just make sure it's in place before you do anything else okay so that's that one now you're going to put glue on this panel so you can either put glue on and then fold it under or we can put glue on this side just on this extra little panel just hold it up so you can see okay and then this comes across again and we just want that to stick okay now because my card is white on the back I think I'm going to put an extra panel on it like I did on my other one and then put an area for your sentiment on let's have a look okay so that is our panels done Okay, so now we just decorate them. Look at that. How lovely is that? Oh, I'm, I'm glad we went with the Lost Lagoon, even if it meant you had to talk amongst yourself for a few minutes. Okay, so that's that. Now, what should we do with the inside? I think I'm still going to make this into a wedding card, just because you can never have too many wedding cards. And I'm using the set that goes with these beautiful dies. So it's called A Lifetime of Love. It's got wishing you a lifetime of love and happiness, congratulations on your wedding day, forever and always, and love you. Now, when I did the first one, it's got congratulations on your wedding day on the front, forever and always is um, embossed on there, and then wishing you a lifetime of love and happiness. Now, I did think, just leave that as plain and use that as your message area, um, but I wanted it to really stand out on the side. So I put some designer series on the paper on the back and I'll just put a nice shaped die on there for, um, in, well, this is very vanilla and put my personal message on the back rather than on the inside. So I'm feeling like I'm gonna do the same here. Now what I did was I die cut from the dies that go with it, the Lifetime of Love dies. You can see there's loads, but there's this really delicate die that comes out like that. Now, if I was using these, I would use some of the adhesive sheets so I don't have to try and get glue on it anywhere. And that happily just sits on there. Now, what I did on my first card is I die cut the whole thing. So let me get one to show you. So I've die cut the whole thing in white, OK? 
okay and then what are we going to put on the front let's have a look should we put the white one on the front no i feel like we need one in this color don't we now lost lagoon let me just die cut that So that's dyed cut, dyed cut, not dyed cut. <laughs> Sorry, I feel like I'm starting to whisper at you. It's the concentration. Okay, so that just pops out. But you need this bit as well, because what I'm going to do is use that on the front of the card. Okay, and that way around, maybe. I'm going to fill in the middle. Don't worry about your bow bit at the minute. Now, do I want to fill it in with wild wheat or white? Because I've got all of them. Oh, that's a difficult decision. I actually think maybe this. Let's go, let's go with that rather than the white. So, I need to stamp my sentiment first. So, I'm going to have... Congratulations on your wedding. Okay. And I put that on there. And I'm going to do it in Lost Lagoon. And I hope that it stands out enough. Now, if I do it now and it doesn't stand out as much as I want it to I'm gonna do another one and emboss it to go on the top all right just because that will make the ink stand out a bit oh goodness I hope I've done it the right way around I didn't check right fingers crossed <gasps> Whew, that was lucky okay so what I do then is that's going to go in there. So, put some glue on the back of this. Okay. Put some glue on there. Stick it on there. Like that. Okay. Now, all the bits where there's gaps for the leaves. So, this bit here. Put a bit of glue, just a teeny bit, just like that. This is the quickest way to do it. So you've got glue in all the leaves and then just match it up. Okay. That goes in there, that goes in there. Can you see how lovely that looks because the outside bit stays like it's floating? But it's really securely glued in. Look at that. Ta -da! And then what I do with this bow is I just cut that. So what I do is fold it over so it's in half. Cut the little triangle out. Oh, I can't get hold of it because I've got ginormous scissors. Okay, do that one more time. Fold it in half. Like that, and that gives you that little pretend bow. Right, I just need some sparkle on the front, and that's the outside. On the inside, so again, I'm going to do exactly the same. So this one, what did I use on the front? Lost Lagoon and Wild Wheat. So one of them is going to be white. Let's get that off. Now I might use white on this side and one is going to be wild wheat, mm. one is going to be that, okay, and one is going to be white, like that. Yep, that's going to be lovely. 
so this one is gonna say forever and always so where's my stamp again take the one off um forever and always yep let me see what that says oh i'm not sure where where around that is forever There's a bit of luck to this. <laughs> so that again, put some glue on the back. And then we're just going to put some glue where the leaf bits are. So that bit is going to go on there. And you can bling it up as much as you want. Okay, so I'm just going to press that down so it's stuck. And then this wild wheat leaves just going to go around the edge. Okay, so that goes like that. Oh, wrong way. That's good because it shows that there is a right way. Okay, so that's that one. So it even looks lovely in that. This one, now this one, the sentiment, sentiment is bigger, slightly bigger than the area I've got, but it's still going to be fine. Okay, so I'm just going to line that up. And I think I need to do it in the same colour. And that is... So it's slightly bigger, but you won't even notice it, okay? See, look, if you're really picky, you can see that wishing is not covered. It's not stamped clearly. But your brain is a really clever thing, and it will fill in the gap for you. So that one is going to go there, like so. Okay, and then the white is going around the edge. So fill in the leaves. Come on, glue, I only need a tiny bit more. We are nearly there. Okay. And that one is going there. Nope, that way round. And there, there, there. Lovely. So just give that a moment for those to glue. And there you have the inside. I think I need a bit more bling on it. Um, just because the other one has got a lot of gold on it. But I think we're there. I think that's our ta-da. Okay, I just need to put a piece of designer series paper on the back. I'm going to go with the same pattern. So it's four and three eighths. Sorry, I just knocked the camera now. Just eager to show you the finished thing. Five and three quarters. Like that. I'm going to go round it with my stamp and white marker. Just get rid of that white core, even though it's going on white paper. Um, I just want it to stand out a bit more. that over and that will nicely cover up the back put some glue on there and then you can choose which one you think you like the best so remember the first one is made with paper from the celebrate the uh, new mini catalogue which runs until April 
and the second one is made with some of the free celebration paper so that one is going to go there Ooh, are you ready okay i'm going to bring them over so we've got this very posh gold one and then we've got this alternative one but equally as lovely Ta -da! okay look at that and isn't that dye just the loveliest thing it's just such a simple amount of detail look at that should we open that one as well there you go thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial if you've liked what you've seen and you'd like to see some more please click the notification bell and subscribe to my channel um, if you'd like to shop some of the products i would love that <laughs> it will keep me doing these videos for a, a while longer thanks for watching bye